Hey, are you looking to enhance your next web development project? Then SVG animation is the right option for you. In a few hours, we are going to cover multiple SVG animation projects. Using animation within the user interface of a website is now standard practice. So without wasting the time, let's see what projects we are going to cover in this course. We are going to start our project with this. In this project, we are going to create SVG stroke animation with CSS. This SVG line stroke animation looks fine with the transparent text. Then we are going to create another line stroke animation with a shape. As you can see, it draw a shape with the line. Next, we are going to create SVG elastic line animation effect. As you can see, it's change color with the movement. In our next project, we are going to learn how we can wrap our title with the stroke. Here you can see a text on your screen. If I hover my cursor on it, it wrap our title with a stroke line. You can implement it on your website. Let's talk about our next project. Here we are going to create editable wavy text animation with 360 degree rotation. Here you can see our text content. It looks like a water wave. And our content is editable also. So we can remove our old content and we can put new text content here. In our case, I'm going to type hello world. In our next project, we are going to create quick SVG loader animation. And you can see the example on your screen, how it's look. Next, we are going to create 3D hover animation using SVG. As you can see on your screen, when I hover my cursor on this image, you can see a 3D shape moving out from the background image. In our next project, we are going to create path tracking animation. You can see the world map on your screen and you want to send a cargo ship from New York to Kolkata. By this path, the ship will reach the destination. And if I reload my browser, you can see the animation. Suppose the red dot is our container ship and it's moving over the line. And in our next section, we are going to learn how we can create all the SVG page loader animation one by one. Next, we are going to create scroll drawing animation. As you can see, if I scroll down my cursor, it draw a shape. And this is not the end. In our upcoming projects, I'm going to cover more interesting SVG animations. This first and effective course will introduce us to new ways to improve your client projects. So what are you waiting for? Enroll this course. We will meet again in the first project. So thanks for watching this video. Good to see you back guys. Today we are going to start our first project. So let's see what we are going to create in our first project. As you can see, we are going to create SVG stroke animation with CSS. This is a good project to start our project series. So moving forward and let's jump into the Visual Studio Code Editor and see how we can create it. So finally, we are in my Visual Studio Code Editor. And as you can see, we already created a HTML document named index.html. With that, we also create style.css file. And as you can see, we already link our style.css file with this HTML page. So at first, I'm going to create SVG tag, SVG. Then inside the SVG tag, I'm going to create a symbol. And also I'm going to set an ID to this symbol. ID, ID equal to text. Then inside this symbol, I'm going to use text tag, text. Here you can type any text you want. I'm going to type your name. If I save this file and show you my browser, here you can see nothing because we do not position this text and do not use this text. So let's use it. So here I'm going to use an attribute name text anchor. Text dash text anchor equal to inside the double quotes middle. I want to place it middle. And also I'm going to set x axis direction and y axis direction xxx equal to 50%. Similarly, yxx equal to 50%. And now we need to use this symbol. Let me show you. For that, I'm going to use use tag, use. And here I'm going to use a attribute name xlink href, xlink colon href equal to I'm going to assign this ID. So I'm going to pass hashtag text. If I set this file and show you my browser, now you can see the text, your name. Let's back to the code editor. 
So we successfully done our HTML part. And now we need to move into the style section, style.css. At first, I want to change the font style. For that, I'm going to use Google Fonts. I'm going to use Roboto Fonts from Google Fonts. From here, I'm going to import this URL. So I'm going to copy this URL and back to my code editor and I'm going to paste it here. And also I'm going to copy the font family from the Google Fonts. Font family, Roboto Sans Serif. As you can see, I use Roboto Black 900. You can use any of it as you need. So let's back to the code editor. At first, I'm going to style the body section. So here I'm going to type body. Inside the curly braces, our first CSS property is margin. Margin 0. Our second CSS property is padding. Padding also 0. Our third CSS property is background. Background. For background, I'm going to use an image. So here I'm going to pass URL value. URL. If I show you my current working directory, here you can see there is an image named images.jpg. So here I'm going to type this image name. .jpg. And now I'm going to use our font family property. Font family roboto sensory. If I save this file and back to my browser, here you can see the result. This is our background image and this is our text, your name. Let's back to the style.css file. Also, I'm going to use another CSS property, which is background size. Background size. And for background size, I'm going to use cover value. And in our background URL, I'm going to use no repeat value. No repeat. And I'm going to save this file. And now I'm going to style our SVG part. So here I'm going to type SVG inside the curly braces. Our first property is position. Position absolute. With that, I'm going to use top and left property. Top 50%. Left 50%. And now I'm going to use transform property. Transform translate minus 50% for x axis and minus 50% for y axis. If I save this file and show you my browser, here you can see we successfully placed our text middle of this page, your name. And now we need to increase the font size. For that, we need to select the text tag which is inside the SVG tag. So here I'm going to type SVG space text inside the curly braces, our first property is font size. Font size 150 pixel. If I save this file and show you my browser, here you can see the result. You cannot view the full text here because we need to increase the SVG area. Let me show you. So here I'm going to use two property, width and height, width 100% and height 250 pixel. If I save this file and back to the browser and for height, I'm going to use 350 pixel. If I save this file and back to the browser, let me show you, here you can see the text size, but there is a problem. It's not perfectly aligned. Let's back to the HTML page. As you can see, I think, yeah, I found the problem. We do not use percentage sign here, 50%. If I save this file and then back to the browser and reload this browser, you can see the result. Now it's perfectly aligned in middle. And if you want to move it up and down, yes, you can. For that, you need to work with x-axis and y-axis. Let me show you. If you change the y-axis position 60% and then save this file and back to the browser and reload it, you can see the result. It's moved down little bit. So I'm going to use 80% value here, 80% and back to the browser and reload it, you can see the result. And now I want to give it a transparent look. For that, we need to work with RGV value. Let me show you. So here I'm going to use fill property, fill and I want to fill with RGVA value, RGVA. For red, I'm going to use zero. For green, also I'm going to use zero. For blue, I'm going to use zero. And for our alpha, I'm going to use 0.1. If I save this file and back to the browser and reload this browser, you can see the transparency. 
our text barely visible. And now we need to set stroke width to this text. For that, we need to use a property. And our property name is stroke width. Stroke width one pixel. With that, we need to use stroke color. Stroke and I'm going to use white color. If I set this file and back to my browser and reload my browser, you can see the result. Here you can see the text. Let's increase the stroke size. I'm going to use 2 pixel for stroke width. And if I set this file and back to my browser and reload it, now it's look very beautiful. Let's back to the code editor. Our next property is stroke line join. Stroke line join. Stroke line join and I'm going to use round value. Round. And now I'm going to use another property which is animation. Animation, our animation name is animate. And I want to run this animation for one second. This is our animation duration. And our animation direction is linear. And I want to run this animation for infinite time. So I'm going to use infinite value. Infinite. Hey, if you are not familiar with CSS animation, you can check out my course. You can check out my course. It's a good course for a beginner to learn CSS animation. If I save this file, it's not going to run our animation. For that, we need to call this animation. But before, I'm going to use another property, which is stroke dash array. Stroke dash array. 80. I'm going to use 80 value. If I save this file and show you my browser and reload it, you can see the result. As you can see, it provides dash in our strokes. And you can see the gap between the strokes. It is 80. And now we need to create keyframe to run the animation. So let's back to the code editor. And here I'm going to create CSS animation keyframe. At the rate, keyframe. Keyframes. And our animation name is animate. Then inside the curly braces, at 100% position, I'm going to use the CSS property, which is stroke dash array. Stroke dash array and here I'm going to pass 160 value. Basically I use two time value according to this value. If I set this file and back to my browser and if I reload this browser here you can see the magic. Here you can see we create the line stroke animation. Let's increase the font size. If I increase the font size to 100 pixel, 250 pixel and then set this file and then back to the browser and reload this browser. Now you can see more clearly. I hope now it's clear for you how we can create SVG stroke animation. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for our next tutorial. Hello guys, good to see you back. Today in this project, we are going to create this beautiful line stroke animation. To create this kind of line stroke animation, you should have basic knowledge of Adobe Illustrator software. Because to create this stroke path, we need Adobe Illustrator software, otherwise any vector graphics software. So without wasting the time, let's move to the Adobe Illustrator software. Here you can see on your screen, I open my Adobe Illustrator software. First, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to create a file with 1920 into 1080 pixel. You can take your own size. It's not mandatory. So at first, I'm going to select my pen tool. And then I'm going to turn off my fill color. And now I'm going to draw a shape using stroke line. And I'm going to fast forward this section. As you can see, this is the random shape using stroke line. And now we need to extract the SVG code from this shape. For that, we need to go to the file section, then save as. As you can see, there is an option SVG. Select this SVG option and then press save. You can play with this option CSS properties, image location, but I would like to go with default one. And then I'm going to click on SVG code. And here you can see the SVG code. And we need to copy the SVG code. So I'm going to press Ctrl A, Ctrl, Ctrl C. And now we need to back to the our code editor. So let's back to the Visual Studio Code Editor. Now we are in Visual Studio Code Editor. And as you can see, we already create index.html file and also style.css file. So at first, inside the body tag, I'm going to create section tag. Section. Then inside the section tag, I'm going to paste, I'm going to paste our SVG code. If I save this file and open this file with live server, let me show you. Here you can see in my browser, it create the exact shape. 
Now, let's back to the Visual Studio Code Editor. At first, I'm going to remove some unnecessary lines from our SVG code. So at first, I'm going to remove two unnecessary lines, this one. And I'm going to save this file. And then I'm going to remove the SVG version. I don't want this SVG version. So I'm going to remove it. And next, I'm going to remove XML NS link, this attribute. I don't know this attribute. And also I don't need X axis and Y axis positions. So I'm going to remove these attributes also. And then I'm going to remove style attribute and XML space attribute. And I'm going to save this file. These are unnecessary lines. If I save this file and open this file in my browser, here you can see the same stroke shape. So let's back to the code editor again. At first, I want to set a class in our polyline tag, which is class, which is draw. And now we need to jump into the our style file. And here I'm going to start styling with body tag, body. Inside the curly braces, I'm going to use margin property. Margin zero, padding also zero. Also I'm going to set a background color. Background, for background, I'm going to use RGB value. For red, I'm going to use 62. For green, also I'm going to use 62. And for blue, I'm going to use 62. Basically, it's give us dark gray background color. Let me show you. Here you can see the result in my browser. And now we need to style our SVG tag. So here, I'm going to type SVG. Then inside the curly braces, let's set width and height to our SVG tag. And then see what happened. With 500 pixel height also 500 pixel if I save this file and show you my browser if you notice clearly here you can see the stroke shape let's back to the code editor again next I'm going to use another CSS property which is position position absolute then I'm going to use top and left property top 50% left also 50% if I save this file and show you my browser as you can see it's not aligned in middle we need to align it middle for that I'm going to use transform property so let's back to the code editor and here I'm going to use transform property transform translate minus 50% for x-axis and minus 50% for y axis. If I save this file and back to the browser, if you notice, now you can see it's aligned middle of this page. But I want to increase the size of this shape. For that, we need to increase width and height value. Let me show you. Width 1000 pixel. Also height 1000 pixel. If I save this file and back to my browser, now it's look quite bigger. And now I'm going to change the stroke color of the shape. For that, we need to style our polyline class. Let me show you. If I back to my index.html page, here you can see the polyline tag. And here you can see we set a class named draw. First, I'm going to remove the style attribute. We don't need the style attribute anymore. And then I'm going back to the style.css file. And here I'm going to type svg dot our class name draw. Then inside the curly braces, first I'm going to use a property named stroke. Stroke, and I want to set a stroke color, and our stroke color is white. If I save this file and show you my browser, let me show you. If you notice here, you can see by default it set black fill color and white stroke color. But I don't want any fill color, and also I want to increase the stroke width. For that, we need to use to another property. At first, I'm going to increase the stroke width. Stroke width, 4 pixel. And then I'm going to remove the fill color. Fill. And for fill, I'm going to use transparent value. If I save this file and then back to the browser, first time you can see our shape very clearly. And now we need to use two important property, which is stroke dash array. Stroke dash array also 
another property stroke dash offset stroke dash offset for now i'm not going to fill any value with that i'm going to use another property which is animation animation and our animation name is animate and i want to run this animation for 5 second this is our animation duration and our animation direction is forward and i want to run this animation for infinite times that's why i'm going to use that's why i'm going to use infinite value if you are not familiar with css animation you can check out my course and also if you want to learn svg from scratch also you can check out my course this course are for absolute beginners moving forward and i'm going to pass stroke dash array value first i'm going to pass 1000 for stroke dash array also i'm going to pass 1000 for stroke dash offset if i save this file and show you my browser as you can see it vanish some part of section from our shape but if you want to create a perfect line stroke animation you need to vanish the whole shape for that we need to increase the value let me show you so now i'm going to pass 2000 stroke dash array also offset 2000 if i save this file and back to my browser as you can see it doesn't hide our shape let's increase the value so here i'm going to pass 3000 and i'm going to save this file let's back to the browser now you can see it removed most of the stroke from our shape let's increase the file once more 3500 if i save this file and back to my browser still you can see the stroke so we need to increase the value until we hide the stroke so here i'm going to pass 4000 if i save this file and back to my browser again some part of stroke is visible so let's increase the value again this time i'm going to pass 4200 if i save this file and back to the browser so as you can see finally we successful to hide our stroke and now we need to create the keyframe for our animation. Let me show you. So let's create the animation. So here I'm going to use a keyword at the rate keyframe. Then we need to pass our animation name and our animation name is animate. Then inside the curly braces, now we need to use only this keyword two. Then inside the curly braces, I'm going to use a property, which is stroke dash offset stroke dash offset and i'm going to set it zero if i save this file and back to my browser here you can see our beautiful line stroke animation as you can see it start from this point and end this point i hope now it's clear for you how we can create line stroke animation so thanks for watching this video stay tuned for our next project hello guys good to see you back in this project we are going to create svg elastic line animation effect and you can see the example on your screen so without wasting your time moving forward and try to create this project. Here you can see I open my Adobe Illustrator software and as you can see there is two curved lines and if I show you my layers here you can see the paths and our viewport size is 400 by 400 pixel and then you need to just export this file as a SVG and you know the process how we can export this image as a SVG and this is the SVG output code of my image here you can see two path tag. And for our example, we need two path tag coordinates. Our first path tag is our exact path tag. And our second path tag is the reflected version of our first path tag. So let's start the practical and try to understand how we can create this animation. Here you can see side by side I open my Visual Studio Code Editor and my browser using Live Server extension. And I already create a HTML document. And I also create a CSS document named main.css. And I link this CSS file with this HTML file. So at first, inside the body tag, I'm going to create the SVG tag. So I'm going to type SVG. And inside this SVG tag, I'm going to create the path tag, path. And I'm not going to use any attribute or property in this path tag. And then I'm going to duplicate this SVG tag once again. Now the question is, why I use two SVG tag? Our first SVG tag is for our line. And our second SVG tag is for our is for glowing effect. I'm going to explain all the thing later. And I'm going to use all the styling part in our CSS file. So let's jump into the CSS file. 
At first, I am going to use universal selector which is star. Then inside the curly braces, our first property is margin, margin 0 and our second property is padding and padding is also 0 and then I am going to select the body tag. So I am going to type body inside the curly braces. First I am going to use display property and our display value is flex and if you want to learn display and CSS properties you can check out my advanced CSS course. It's a very good course for a beginner to understand CSS grid and CSS flex properties. And our next CSS property is justify content. And I want to all my content in center that's why I'm going to use center value. And also I want to use align our item center so I'm going to use align item property align items center and also I'm going to set minimum height to our body and our minimum height is 100 v8 and now I'm going to set a background color to our body so I'm going to use background property and I'm going to use RGB value for that inside the parenthesis for red I'm going to pass 77 comma for green also I'm going to pass 77 comma for blue and for blue I'm going to pass 77 once again if I save this file, it is going to provide a grey color to our background. And now we need to position our SVG tag middle of this page. For that, I am going to select SVG tag. Inside the curly braces, first I am going to use position property. And our position value is absolute value. And then I am going to provide some width to our SVG image. So I am going to use width property. Width 400 pixel. And by default, I don't want any color to our SVG image. So I am going to use fill property fill none and then come our most important job we need to create the curve path if i show you my index.html here you can see inside the svg tag we have a put tag so we need to select the put tag so first i'm going to type svg then i'm going to select put tag then inside the curly braces first we need to draw the path as you know to create this path we need d attribute and some value and now we need the SVG image which we extract from the illustrator file. And here you can see the D attribute and the path coordinates. So at first I am going to copy our first path tag coordinate. And then I am back to my CSS file. As you know to create a path we need to use D property. So I am going to type small d colon and then we need to use path function. Then inside the parenthesis we need to pass the value. Basically this property is going to create the exact path we want. Our next property is stroke property. We need to give a stroke to this path. So I am going to type stroke. And for our stroke I am going to use hexa value. FF0092. It is going to give a pink stroke to this path. If I save this file here you can see the result. And now we need to increase the path width. For that I am going to use stroke width property. So I am going to type stroke width. And for our path, I'm going to use 50. If I save this file, you can see the result. And now I want rounded corner for this path. So I'm going to use stroke line cap property. So I'm going to type stroke line cap. And for that, I'm going to use rounded value. If I save this file, you can see the result. As you can see, we cannot see the whole path in our view box area. So we need to move this path using transform value. So I'm going to use transform property. Transform translate first we need to pass x axis value and then we need to pass y axis value i want to move this path 50 pixel x axis direction and then i want to move this path 50 percent y axis direction if i set this file now you can see the complete path and now we need to animate this path for that i'm going to use animation property as i told you earlier in this course you should have basic knowledge about css animation and if you don't have any knowledge about css animation you can check out my CSS animation course. I hope you like it. So at first I am going to provide the animation name and our animation name is animate and I want to run this animation for 2 seconds. So our duration time is 2 seconds and for our animation I am going to use easy in out animation mode and I want to run this animation infinite time. So I am going to use infinite value and now we need to create the keyframe for the animation. For that I am going to type at the rate keyframe and our animation name is animate then inside the curly braces I am going to define the animation position in 0% position inside the curly braces 
I am going to use the same path coordinates. So I am going to copy the path property and paste it here. And also I am going to use same stroke color in that position. So I am going to copy this property and I am going to paste it here. From zero position, then we need to jump into the 50% position. Inside the curly braces, here we need to use our second path coordinates. So let's jump into the our SVG image. And here you can see our second path coordinates. So I'm going to copy the coordinates and I'm going to paste it here. And also I'm going to use different stroke color in that position. So I'm going to use stroke property once again. Stroke and for our stroke color I'm going to use hexa value. 0, 0, C3, double F. This is light blue color hexa value. If I save this file, you can see the animation and also you can see the color change. So we successfully create our elastic line animation. But one thing is missing in this animation. Let's use a glowing effect. It's going to make our animation more beautiful. For that, we need to back to the HTML document. Here you can see we use two SVG image. And I hope you already understand it create two stroke. For both this stroke, we use same CSS value. That's why we cannot see the difference. And now I want to blur one of the stroke. For that, we need to use CSS advanced selector, which is nth child. So I'm back to my main.css file and here I'm going to type svg colon nth child selector and I want to select our second svg tag that's why I'm going to pass 2 then inside the curly braces I'm going to use a css property which is filter and our filter value is blur and I want to blur my stroke up to 40 pixel so if I save this file now you can see the effect it's look pretty awesome with transformation, you can see the glowing effect. I hope you like this exercise. So thanks for watching this video. Please stay tuned for our new exciting exercises. Hello guys, nice to see you back. Once again, I'm back with a new project related SVG animation. In this project, we are going to learn how we can wrap a title with the stroke. Here you can see the text on your screen. And as you can see, if I hover my cursor on this text, it wrap our text with line stroke animation. We call it title wrapping animation. So let's see how we can create this SVG animation project. Here you can see on your screen, side by side, I open my Visual Studio Core Editor and my browser using Live Server extension. And I already create a HTML document. So at first, inside the body tag, I'm going to create a div tag. So I'm going to type div and our div class is SVG wrapper dash wrapper. And inside this div container, I'm going to create SVG tag and I'm going to set height and width to this SVG tag height equal to inside the double quotes 60 and width equal to inside the double quotes 320 and also we need to provide the XML namespace let me show you sometime this declaration is necessary and sometime not and then inside the SVG tag I'm going to create a rectangle. For this, I'm going to use rectag, R-E-C-T. And also I'm going to assign a class to this rectangle. And the class name is shape. And now I'm going to declare height and width to this rectangle. So height equal to 60 and width equal to 320. And then I press slash arrow to end this tag. If I save this file, here you can see the image. As you know, by default, it came with black fill color. Here you can see it create a rectangle which height is 60 and width is 320. And then inside the SVG tag, I'm going to create another div tag. Div. And also I'm going to assign a class to this div. Text. And I'm going to type a text in this container. Your text. Text. If I save this file, you can see the result. So we successfully complete our HTML portion. And now we need to work with style section. So at first, I'm going to create the style tag inside the head tag. So I'm going to type style inside the style tag. First, I'm going to select HTML and body tag. So I'm going to type HTML comma body. Then inside the curly braces, first, I want to set a background color. So I'm going to use background property and for value, I'm going to use RGB value, RGB 
then inside the round braces i'm going to type 20 comma 20 comma 20 it going to set dark gray color in our background if i save this file you can see the result and now i'm going to set a height to this body and this html tag so i'm going to type height property height 100 percent then text align center and i'm going to use overflow hidden if i save this file now you can see it horizontally align our content center and now i'm going to style this parent container which class is svg wrapper so i'm going to type dot svg dash wrapper then inside the curly braces at first i'm going to use position property position relative top 50 percent i just want to center this content vertically that's why i use this property and then i'm going to use transform property transform translate y minus 50 percent and our margin value is auto and also our wrapper width is 320 pixel if i save this file you can see the result so we vertically and horizontally align our content center of this page and now i'm going to work with this rectangle shape for this i'm going to use shape class dot shape then inside the curly braces at first i'm going to transparent to this rectangle shape for this i'm going to use fill property fill transparent if i save this file here you can see the result and then i'm going to assign a stroke to this rectangle for this i'm going to use stroke property and our stroke color is red if i save this file now you can see the stroke and also i'm going to increase the stroke width which is 8 pixel if i save this file you can see the result and now we need to work with stroke dash array property and stroke dash offset property let me show you so i'm going to type stroke dash array 140 pixel to 540 pixel using these values we can control our stroke dash size also stroke dash gap so our next property is stroke dash offset and our stroke dash offset value is minus 474 value if i save this file you can see the result and also i'm going to use border property for this shape so i'm going to use border border 5 pixel and border type is solid and border color is black if i save this file it still exists under the stroke line that's why you cannot see the result and now i'm going to use transition property for animation duration so i'm going to type transition for stroke width i'm going to use one second comma for stroke dash offset i'm going to use one second once again comma and for stroke dash array i'm going to use one second duration once again and if i save this file here you can see there is no changes i want to apply this transition when i hover my cursor into the text and now i'm going to style this text for this inside this style tag i'm going to use the text class dot text then inside the curly braces at first i'm going to change the font size and our font size is 22 pixel and then come and then i'm going to change the line height property so i'm going to type line height and our line height value is 32 pixel and i also need some space between these letters so i'm going to use letter spacing property letter spacing and the value is 8 pixel and also i'm going to change the font color so i'm going to type color and our color is white if i save this file you can see the result and now i'm going to move this text above the line for that i'm going to use top value top minus 48 pixel and our position is relative if i save this file you can see the result and now i'm going to use hover selector to apply this effect 
so i'm going to use dot svg wrapper class colon hover so when i hover this svg wrapper container i want to change the stroke dash array property and stroke dash offset property for that we need to select the shape dot shape then inside the curly braces at first i'm going to change the stroke width value so i have to type stroke width and i'm going to use two pixel value for our stroke and our next property is stroke dash offset and our stroke dash offset value is 0 and our last property is stroke dash array and our stroke dash array value is 760 if i save this file and then i hover my cursor into the text here you can see the effect so we successfully create the title wrapping effect to create a perfect dash array size, you need to work with stroke dash array property and stroke dash offset property. Just you need to remember these values are very important. And if we change the rectangle size, and then also we need to change the property values. In our upcoming exercise, I'm going to explore more about this property. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for our next exercise. Good to see you back guys. Once again, I'm back with a new exciting project. In this project, we are going to create editable wavy text animation with 360 degree rotation. As you can see, it's give your text water wave effect. Not only that, our content is also editable. We can change the text directly from the browser. We can select our content from the browser and also we can remove it. And we can put any text content here. In our case, I'm going to put hello world. For this project, we need to use SVG filters. So without wasting your time, let's start the practical. So finally, we are in Visual Studio Code Editor. And as you can see, we already create index.html file. And also we create style.css file. And we already link our style file with this HTML file. So at first, inside the body tag, I'm going to create h2 tag, h2. And inside this h2 tag, I'm going to type some text. For now, I'm going to type your text. And as you can see, we already opened this file with live server in our browser. Let me open the browser. Here you can see in my browser your text. Let's back to the Visual Studio Code editor. But I want editable content. For that we need to use a attribute. And our attribute name is content editable. So here I'm going to type content editable. And we need to make it true. If I save this file and back to the browser and click on this text, here you can see we directly edit our text. You can put any text here. Suppose I want to type name now we can edit our text through the browser if i reload this file as you can see it is back to the old content your text let us back to the visual studio code again now we need to jump into the style file at first i'm going to style our body tag body inside the curly braces our first property is margin margin zero our next property is padding padding also zero our third property is display and I want to use flex value display flex justify content center also I want to align the items that's why I'm going to use align item property align items center with that we need to set minimum height mean height 100 VH also I'm going to set background color background for background color i'm going to use rgb value rgb for red i'm going to pass 49 also for green i'm going to pass 49 and for blue also i'm going to pass 49 if i save this file as you can see it's provide dark gray background color if i show you my browser here you can see in my browser we set dark gray background color and also we align our content middle of this page let's back to the code editor again now we need to style our h2 tag h2 inside the curly braces our first property is color color and i'm going to use white color white our second property is margin margin zero our next property is padding padding also zero and i'm going to use font family font family sans serif i'm going to use sans serif font here and also i'm going to use font weight 
font weight i would like to go with bolder font so i'm going to select 900 and then i'm going to select font size font size 8 em if i set this file and back to the browser here you can see the result your text and if you want to edit it also you can you can put any text here suppose i'm going to pass hello world we can edit content directly but if we reload this browser as you can see it's back to the old content and now we need to jump into the most important part of this video which is svg filter so let's back to the visual studio code and let's back to the index.html file and here i'm going to create a svg filter so at first i'm going to take svg tag svg inside this svg tag i'm going to take filter tag also i'm going to set a id to this filter id equal to wave then inside this filter tag first i'm going to use fe turbulence filter fe turbulence and then we need to use some attribute our first attribute name is type type equal to inside the double quotes our type name is turbulence our next attribute name is base frequency so here i'm going to type base frequency base frequency equal to 0 0.005 our next attribute is num octave num octave equal to 5 i'm going to set num octave 5 and i'm going to set this file next we need to create another filter which is fe displacement map so here i'm going to type fe displacement map and also we need to pass two attribute here in equal to source graphics and our next attribute is scale scale equal to 50 so we successfully create our svg filter now we need to apply this filter in our body tag so i'm going back to the css file and inside this body tag i'm going to use a property named filter filter url and here i'm going to use this id wave so i copy this id and here i'm going to pass hashtag our id name if i save this file and show you my browser here you can see in my browser the displacement result here you can see how this effect restrict our text let's back to the css file because we need to align it middle of this page so here i'm going to style another tag which is svg svg inside the curly braces i'm going to set height and width width 0 height also 0 if i set this file and show you my browser now you can see it's aligned middle of this page and now we are going jump into the our final part which is animation we need to rotate our content 360 degree so let's back to the code editor so now inside the h2 tag i'm going to take animation property animation and our animation name is animate and i want to run our animation for 20 second this is our animation duration and our animation direction is linear and at last i want to run our animation infinite time so here i'm going to use infinite value infinite and now we need to create the keyframe for this animation so here i'm going to use keyframe keyword at the red keyframes and our animation name is animate then inside the curly braces in zero percent position means our start position i want to use transform property transform and here i'm going to use rotate value rotate 360 degree then in our end position means 100 percent position once again i'm going to use transform property transform rotate and now i want to rotate it zero degree if i set this file and back to my browser let me show you here you can see our final effect with the animation not only that also our content is editable we can edit directly so here i'm going to pass hello world 
hello world so this is it for this tutorial i hope you like our project thanks for watching this video stay tuned for our next project good to see you back guys once again i'm back with a new svg project and in this project we are going to create quick svg loader animation and you can see the example on your screen how it's look so without wasting the time let's jump into the visual studio code editor so as you can see side by side i open my visual studio code editor and my browser using live server extension and i already create index.html file and style.css file and i also link our style file with the index.html page so at first inside the body tag i'm going to create svg tag let me show you then inside the svg tag i'm going to create a circle for circle we need to use circle tag which is from svg and then we need to provide some attribute our first attribute is cx equal to for cx i'm going to pass 70 for cy i'm going to pass 70 and for our radius i'm going to pass 70 again so if i set this file here you can see the circle in my browser so as you can see we create a circle with radius 70 now we need to jump into the our style file and here i'm going to start styling with universal selector with universal selector so here i'm going to press star then inside the curly braces i'm going to set margin and padding margin zero and padding also zero next i'm going to select our body tag then inside the curly braces our first property is display display i'm going to use flex value our next property is justify content justify content center also align item align items center i want to place this circle middle of this page that's why i use these properties and then also i'm going to set minimum height mean height for mean height i'm going to use 100 vh if i set this file you can see now it's moved middle of this page and also i'm going to set a background color to this page background for background i'm going to use hexadecimal value i want to set dark gray background color so i'm going to type 343434 if i set this file you can see the result and now i'm going to style our svg tag for that i'm going to select svg inside the curly braces our first property is position position relative and then our next property is width width 150 pixel also height 150 pixel after set this file you can see it perfectly align in middle and now i want to design our circle tag which is inside the svg tag so here i'm going to type svg space circle then inside the curly braces our first property is width and i'm going to set 100 percent our second property is height also i'm going to set 100 percent then i'm going to use fill property fill and i want to fill with none because i want stroke not the fill color that's why i use none and next i'm going to set stroke width stroke width stroke width 10 and now I'm going to provide stroke color stroke and for stroke color I'm going to use hexa value double zero a1 ff if I set this file you can see the sky color here you can see we need to move our circle a little bit for that I'm going to use transform property transform transform translate at first I'm going to move it 5 pixel for x axis and 5 pixel from y axis if i set this file you can see the result now you can see the perfect circle also i'm going to use stroke line cap property so here i'm going to type stroke line cap and i'm going to use round value our next property is stroke dash array stroke dash array first i'm going to try with 400 and our next property is stroke dash offset stroke dash offset also here i'm going to use 400 if i set this file 
as you can see it's not completely hide our circle radius so i'm going to increase the value 440 also 440 if i set this file here you can see it's completely invisible and now we need to jump into the our most important part which is animation so here i'm going to use animation property animation our animation name is animate I want to run this animation for 4 seconds. With that, our animation direction is linear. And I want to run this animation for infinite time. That's why I use infinite value. For this animation, we need to create the keyframe. At the rate, keyframes. Here we need to pass our animation name. And our animation name is animate. Then inside the curly braces, in 0% position, I want to set stroke dash offset. I'm going to use stroke dash offset property. Stroke dash offset. Here I'm going to pass 440. Then in 50% position, I'm going to set stroke dash offset property. Stroke dash offset 0. If I set this file, you can see the result. Let me pass another value in our keyframe. 50.1% in 50.1% I want to set stroke dash property stroke dash offset 880 if I set this file you can see the result here you can see the loading animation let me pass another value with 0% comma 100% if I set this file now it's work perfectly and now we need to rotate the whole SVG section to achieve the perfect rotation. For that, I'm going back to the SVG selector and here I'm going to use animation property. Animation. And our animation name is rotate. And I want to run this animation for 2 seconds. And our animation direction is also linear. And I want to run it infinite time. And now we need to create the keyframe. At the rate, keyframes and our animation name is rotate then inside the curly braces in 0% position I'm going to set transform property transform transform rotate and I want to rotate it 0 degree then in 100% position once again we need to use transform property transform rotate and this time I want to rotate it 360 degree if I set this file, now you can see the result. Now you can see we perfectly complete our job. We create a beautiful loading animation. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for our next tutorial. Hey, once again I'm back with a new exciting project. In this project, we are going to create 3D hover animation using SVG. As you can see on your screen, when I hover my cursor on this image, you can see a 3D shape moving out from the background object. Now the question is how we can create this animation. For this, first we need to draw the 3D SVG shape in our Illustrator software. So without wasting our time, let's move to the Illustrator software. So finally, I am back to my Adobe Illustrator software. And I create a viewport area 1920 by 1080 pixel. And here you can see our background color is dark gray. And now I am going to create a rectangle shape. Something like that. And also I am going to change the rectangle background color, which is deep sky blue. And also I'm going to use rounded corner to this rectangle. And I'm going to align this rectangle middle of this viewport area. And now I'm going to type a text. For this I'm going to use text tool. So I'm going to type SVG. And also we need to increase the text size. So I'm going to increase the text size. And also I'm going to change the font style. For this I'm going to use Arial font. Arial black. And now I'm going to move this text inside the rectangle, something like that. And also I'm going to scale up this text. And I'm going to align it center of this rectangle. And now I'm going to convert this shape into an outline stroke. And also I'm going to change the text color, which is white. And then I'm going to duplicate this shape in the same place. So I'm going to press Ctrl C. Control shift v Now you can see we have total two different text layer and now I'm going to hide one of the text shape And now I'm going to select the text and the rectangle shape together 
and then I'm going to turn on my shape builder tool. Just press shift and press M. And I'm going to cut the text shape from this rectangle. So I'm going to press Alt key. Here you can see a minus cursor sign. And then I'm going to click on this G. Similarly, I'm going to click on this V shape. And similarly, I'm going to click on this S shape. Now you can see it cut the rectangle shape according to the text. There is two method that you can cut shape like this. Just click on Windows and here you can see an option named Pathfinder. And here you can see a shape mode option, minus font. You can create the same shape using this one. It's a different method to do the same job. And then come the most important section of our tutorial. Now we need to convert this rectangle shape into a 3D shape. For this, select the rectangle shape and click on the effect option. And here you can see an option 3D. And then I'm going to select extrude and bevels. As you can see, it already convert our shape into a 3D shape. But I'm going to provide my own rotation value. For X axis rotation, I'm going to use zero value. And for Z axis rotation, I'm going to use zero value once again. And for Y axis rotation, I'm going to use 32, something like that. And also we can control the light source of the 3D effect. Let me show you. Here you can see a more option. Just click on the more option. And here you can see the light source. And I'm going to change the light source of the shape in this point, something like that. And then I press OK. You can set any perspective or any angle for this example. So I'm going to press OK. And then I'm going to visible my height text layer. And also I'm going to apply the same 3D effect to this text. So I select the text. And once again, I'm going back to the effect option and select extrude and bevel. And I'm going to use the same coordinates which I used in our previous one, 33, 0. And also we need to apply the similar light direction, something this point. And then I press OK. And now I'm going to change the text group name. And our group name is text. That's it guys. So finally we are done. Our shape is complete. And now we need to save this image as a SVG image. For that, just click on the file, save as, and then select the path of this image and change the image name. I'm going to use image one. And also you need to change the file type, which is SVG. And then tick on the use artboard and then press save. And it's totally depend on you what kind of CSS property you are going to use. You can use style attribute, otherwise you can use style element. So I would like to go with style attributes and then I'm going to press OK. So finally our design part is complete. In the similar way, I already draw another image and I'm going to use this image for this example. So let's jump into the Visual Studio Code Editor and try to understand how it's work. So finally, I'm back to my Visual Studio Code Editor and I already create a HTML document. And I link this HTML document with a CSS file named style.css. Here you can see we have total two images in my current working directory, image1.svg and image2.svg. For this exercise, I'm going to use image2.svg. This is our image1.svg file and this is our image2.svg file. Using this similar procedure, I create this image. And I use this one because its perspective is much better than our image1. So let's back to the Visual Studio Code Editor. So at first, I'm going to copy the whole SVG code from image 2. Control A, Control C. And then I back to my index.html file. And then inside the body tag, I'm going to paste the code. And I'm going to scale down our font size little bit. And if you remember, we changed the name of the group of text, which is text. That's why inside the G tag, it created ID named text. And you already know G means group tag. So if I set this file and show you my browser, here you can see the image in our browser. And now we need to apply animation to this image. So let's back to the Visual Studio Code Editor once again. So let's jump into the style.css file. First, I'm going to create a keyframe for animation. At the rate, keyframe and our animation name is animate. Then inside the curly braces, we need to provide the starting point and end point of this animation. So I'm going to use from keyword. 
from inside the curly braces I'm going to use transform property transform translate x position is 0 this is for x axis direction and translate y 0 and this is for y axis direction so this is the exact position of our text and in that position I want to opacity 1 I want to show full opacity in that position and then we need to provide the end position so I'm going to duplicate this line and I'm going to type two keyword when I hover my cursor on this SVG image I want to move this text in that position so in x axis direction I want to move minus 25 pixel and in y axis direction I'm going to move plus 25 pixel so I'm going to type minus 25 pixel and in y axis direction I'm going to type 25 pixel and now we need to create the selector and call the animation so when I hover my cursor into the SVG image I want to run the animation so I'm going to type SVG colon hover so when I hover my cursor in the whole SVG image I want to apply this animation in my text ID so I'm going to type hashtag text then inside the curly braces at first I'm going to call my animation name animation name and our animation name is animate and then come animation duration property so I'm going to type animation duration and I want to run this animation for one second and our next property is animation iteration count and I'm going to use infinite value I want to run this animation infinite time when I hover my cursor into the SVG image and at last we need to declare the animation mode for this we need to use animation direction property so I'm going to type animation direction which is alternate so if I save this file and show you my browser here you can see the animation effect it worked perfectly let's create the text transparent so whenever our text move from the exact place I want to make it transparent so let's back to the Visual Studio Code editor once again and now I'm going to change the opacity in our end position and I want to make it fully transparent if I save this file and back to the browser now you can see our animation is more cooler than previous one so I hope now it's clear for you how we can create this 3d animation so thanks for watching this video stay tuned for our next exercise hello guys good to see you back once again I'm back with a new exciting project related SVG animation and our project name is path tracking animation so let's see what we are going to create in this project here you can see the world map on your screen and you want to send a cargo ship from New York to Kolkata and by this path the ship will reach the destination and if I reload this browser you can see the animation as you can see our container ship follow this path and reach the destination suppose red dot is our ship and it's moving over the blue path so moving forward and try to create this beautiful project here you can see I'm back to my Adobe Illustrator software and I also select the pen tool and also you can see I turn off my fill color I just use stroke color and our stroke color is blue and our view box resolution is 1920 by 1080 so at first I'm going to draw a curved stroke something like that that's it so this is the path which I'm going to use in our project and if you want to increase the stroke width yes you can just select the path and then I'm going to use 2 pt value for our stroke now it's look perfect and now we need to extract the SVG code from this image for that we need to click on the file option and then save as and then you need to assign a name for this file I'm going to use demo and also we need to select the file type which is SVG and then I select use artboard option and then I press save here you can see lot of options everything remains same just you need to use CSS property style element and then you need to press ok to save this file so let's back to the visual studio code editor and see what type of attribute we get from this SVG code so finally I'm back to my visual studio code editor and here you can see my directory and there is a SVG image named demo.svg and if I open this image here you can see some codes as you can see our view box size is 1920 by 1080 and inside the SVG tag there is a path tag 
which I create in Adobe Illustrator software. And the path class is ST0. And also you can see the CSS property of this path. And if I open this image in my browser, you can see the result. It is just a SVG path, nothing else. So once again, I'm back to my Visual Studio Code Editor. At first, I'm going to create a HTML document named index.html. Index .html. And also I create the basic structure. So let's create the path tag animation. First, I'm going to use SVG tag. So I'm going to type SVG and inside this SVG tag, we need to define the view box size. And then we need to define width and height to this SVG image. So first I'm going to define width. Width equal to 1920 and our height equal to 1080. So this is our viewport size. And inside this SVG tag, first we need to create the path tag. But I'm going to use this path tag. So I'm going to copy the path tag and paste it here. And also I need to style this path. For this, I'm going to use style tag. And as you can see, our path class name is st0. So I'm going to type dot st0. Then inside the curly braces, first, if I show you my SVG image code, here you can see our field property is none. So I'm going to copy the same CSS property and value from this code. And I'm going to use it here. So if I set this file and open this file with live server, here you can see it create the same stroke path with blue color. And now we need to create a red dot, which is going to follow this path. For that, we need to use circle tag. So let's back to the Visual Studio Code Editor and try to understand how it's work. So first, I'm going to create a circle tag after the path tag. Circle, and I'm going to use inline styling method for this circle. So I'm going to use style tag. Our first property is fill, and our fill color is red. So I'm going to use hexa value for that. Capital F F 0 0 0 0. As you know, this is the hexa value of red color. And our second property is stroke. So I'm going to type stroke here. And for stroke, I'm going to use white color. As you know, to create a circle, we need to use radius value. So I'm going to use R equal to, and inside the double quotes, our radius value is 8.5. If I save this file, and then I show you my browser. Here you can see a red dot at laptop corner. So now we need to start an animation which can move our red dot from this point to this point, following this path. For this, we need to use a SVG animation property. And the animation property name is animate motion. So inside this circle tag, I'm going to use animate motion tag. Animate motion. First, we need to define the path of this animation. For this, I'm going to use path property. Path equal to, inside the double quotes, I'm going to use the same path. So I'm going to copy this path, and then I'm going to paste it here. And our next attribute is duration attribute. So I'm going to use dur equal to 6 second. And our next property is fill. Fill equal to, I'm going to use freeze value. F R double E Z E. And now we need to just close the animate motion tag. That's it. Let me explain all this thing once again. First I create a SVG tag, which viewport size is 1920 by 1080. Then inside this SVG tag, first I create a path tag. And this is the coordinates of this path tag. And we already style our path tag using this class. And then I create a red dot using circle tag. And our red dot radius value is 8.5. And then I use a SVG animation tag which is animate motion. It going to animate our red dot. And now we need to move the red dot according to this path. For that, I use path tag attribute. And inside the path tag attribute, I use the same value. If we do not use same value, our red dot don't going to follow this path. And then we provide animation duration time, which is six seconds. And our animation fill mode is freeze. It's mean when the track is complete, it going to freeze our red dot. So if I save this file, and then I show you my browser, and then I reload my browser, here you can see we perfectly execute our path tag animation. And after tracking is over, it's going to freeze our point end of this path. 
So I hope now the Pattek animation concept is clear for you. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for our next exercise. Hello guys, good to see you back. In this section, we are going to create multiple SVG loader one by one. Here you can see total eight different type of SVG loader. And I'm going to create all the loaders one by one. And I'm going to start our project with the first one. So let's see how we can create it. So finally, I am back to my Adobe Illustrator software. And I create a viewport area 200 by 200 pixel. As you can see, inside this viewport area, we have total two shape. A complete gray ring circle shape. With that, as you can see, there is a little piece of circle. And now I need to rotate this red piece of circle according to the circle circumface. Now the question is, how we can create this shape? As you can see, I already create a similar size of viewport area. And here, I'm going to create a circle without fill color. And then, I'm going to middle align this circle shape, something in that position. And then, I'm going to increase the stroke value, 2 pixel. It's up to you what kind of stroke weight you want. And then, we need to convert this stroke into an outline path. For this, you need to select the stroke. And then, you need to go to the object section and here you can see an option path. Just click on outline stroke. Now it convert our stroke into a shape. And now I'm going to change the color of the stroke. Something light gray color. And then I'm going to duplicate this circle shape in that position. For this I'm going to press Ctrl C, Ctrl Shift V. Here you can see in my layer section we have total two shape now. And now I'm going to hide our previous shape. And now I'm going to cut this circle shape from this point to this point. For this, I'm going to use line shape. And I'm going to draw a line from this point to this point and this point to this point. And I'm going to select all the shapes and line together. And then I'm going to press Shift M to activate Shape Builder tool. And I'm going to cut this circle from this point and also I'm going to remove the stroke lines. And then I'm going to fill the shape with red color. And also I'm going to visible my previous circle. So we successfully create the loader structure. And now we need to save this image as a SVG image. For that you need to go file section and then press save as. And here you can see file type option. SVG. Use artboards and then press save. What kind of and it is up to you what kind of CSS property you want to use. You can use style attribute, otherwise you can use style element. And you know the process. I already saved my SVG image, that's why I'm don't going to save it again. So let's back to the Visual Studio Code Editor and try to understand how we can create this loader. So finally, I'm back to my Visual Studio Code Editor. And I already opened a HTML document named index.html. And also you can see a SVG image in my current working directory named loader.svg. And if I show you the SVG code, you can see it clearly. As you can see, our view box size is 200 by 200. And as you can see, we have total two paths in our SVG image. Our first path is for complete circle. And our second path is for half part of this circle. And now I'm going to copy the whole code from this file. And then I'm going to jump into the index.html file. At first, inside my body section, I'm going to create a div div class loader inside this div i'm going to paste all the svg code something like that if i save this file and show you my browser you can see the svg image in our browser but it's look pretty huge we need to scale down it also we need to position it middle of this page so once again i'm back to the visual studio code editor and i'm going to type style tag here style at first, I'm going to style the body. Inside the curly braces, first I'm going to use margin property. Margin 0. Then I'm going to use padding property. Padding also 0. And then I'm going to set a background color. I'm going to use RGB value. RGB, inside the parenthesis, our R value is 66. G value is also 66. And B value is also 66. If I save this file, and show you my browser here you can see it create a dark gray background color 
and then I'm going to scale down this loader size. For this, I'm going to select loader class. Loader, insert the curly braces, height 300 pixel, width also 300 pixel. If I save this file and show you my browser, here you can see we successfully scaled down our image. And now we need to align this SVG image center of this page. So inside the body selector, first I'm going to use display property. Display flex justify content center text align center. If I save this file and show you my browser, here you can see we horizontally align this image. And now we need to assign a margin to center it middle of this page. So I'm going to use margin top value. Margin top 300 pixel. If I save this file and show you my browser, here you can see we middle our loader successfully. And then come the main part of this tutorial. We need to animate this loader. For this, we need to rotate this red shape in the circle circumface. So let's see how we can rotate this shape. Now we need to animate this path. So at first, we need to create the closing path tag. And inside this path tag, we need to use another tag, which is animate transform. So I'm going to type animate transform. And also I'm going to close this tag. And also we need to use some basic attributes. Our first attribute is attribute type equal to XML. And also we need to provide attribute name equal to transform. And our animation type is rotate type equal to rotate. And then we need to provide animation starting point and animation end point. For this I'm going to use for this I'm going to use from attribute from equal to our starting rotation angle is zero. And then we need to provide the center point of this rotation. So we need to pass x axis and y axis. As you know, our SVG view box height and width is 200 pixel. To find the center point, we need to divide width and height with two. So if I divide it 200 by two, it's written 100. This is for x axis. And similarly for y axis, it's written 100. So this is our x axis point and this is our y axis point. So this is the starting point of this animation. And also we need to provide the end point of this animation. So I'm going to use two value. Two equal to inside the double quotes. And first we need to provide the rotation angle. And I want to complete this rotation. So I'm going to use 360 degree. And also we need to provide the center point. So our x axis direction is 100 and also y axis direction is 100. And then we need to provide animation duration time. So I'm going to use dir value, dir equal to 0 0.8 second. And also I'm going to run this animation infinite time. So I'm going to use repeat count attribute count equal to inside the double quotes indefinite. If I save this file and then show you my browser, here you can see on your screen our loader worked successfully. And if you want to make this rotation more faster, you need to decrease the duration time. Let me show you. So now I'm going to use 0.4 second duration. If I save this file and show you my browser, here you can see our rotation speed is increased. So I hope now it's clear for you how we can create this SVG loader. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for our next exercise. Nice to see you back guys. Once again, I'm back with an exciting project. In this project, we are going to learn scroll drawing animation using SVG path tag. So let's jump into the web browser. As you can see, there is nothing on this page. It's look completely blank. But when I scroll down my cursor, it draw a shape. It's draw a star shape. This SVG trick is related to scroll bar. So when I scroll down my cursor, it complete the shape. So let's see how we can create it. So side by side, I open my Visual Studio Code Editor and my browser using Live Server extension. And I already create a HTML document named index.html. So at first, inside the body tag, I'm going to create the SVG tag. SVG. And also, I'm going to assign an ID to this SVG tag. ID equal to my SVG. Then, inside the head section, I'm going to use style. So inside the style tag, first I'm going to select the body tag. Body. 
and our first property is height height equal to 3000 pixel you might be shocked why I use this amount of height because we don't have lot of content in this web page that's why for scrolling purpose I'm going to use this height if I set this file here you can see the scroll bar and then I'm going to start the SVG image hashtag my SVG inside the curly braces our first property is position position fixed I'm going to use fixed position for this example then top 15% and for the SVG image I'm going to use 400 pixel width width 400 pixel and height 210 pixel and also I'm going to use margin on left side so I'm going to type margin left minus 50 pixel because I want to position the SVG image in that position not the top left of the corner that's why I use these properties next I'm going to create the star shape using path tag so path closing path inside the path tag our first property is fill fill equal to none I don't want any fill color for the star shape then our next property is stroke stroke equal to red and also I want to set the stroke width so I'm going to use stroke width property width equal to 3 and also I'm going to set ID to this part ID equal to star so let's create the shape using path coordinates as you know to create a shape using path tag first you need to use D attribute D equal to inside the double quotes our starting point we need to provide the starting point capital M 150 pixel and also need to provide the endpoint and our endpoint is 200 pixel and our next point is capital L 225 pixel and also endpoint is 0 pixel if I save this file as you can see it draw a line hey there is a mistake in with spelling I forgot to provide D between I and T if I save this file now you can see the width of the stroke so this is our starting point 150 pixel y axis and 200 pixel x axis and this is our next point to create a star shape I'm going to create another point in this place for x axis I'm going to pass 300 and for y axis I'm going to pass 200 if I save this file you can see it's create another point in that position and now I'm going to create another point something in that position for this I'm going to pass L 150 x axis and 50 y axis if I set this file as you can see it create the line and then I want another point in that position so in x axis direction I'm going to use L 300 and in y axis direction I'm going to use just 50 if I save this file now you can see the point and now we need to complete this shape so we need to draw a line from this point to this point and as you know to back to the start point we need to pass Z value just we need to pass capital Z if I save this file now you can see it complete our star shape so we successfully complete the drawing part but if I scroll this page it's not going to draw the image for this we need to use JavaScript so at first I'm going to create the script tag after SVG tag I'm going to type script then inside the script tag at first I'm going to get the ID of this path element which is star so var star equal to document dot get element by ID inside the parenthesis our ID name is star and colon to end the line and next we need to get total length of this shape for this I'm going to create another variable var length equal to star dot I'm going to use get total length function now we have the total length of the star shape and next we need to play with stroke dash array value and stroke dash offset value so star dot style dot stroke dash array equal to length then semicolon to end this line 
stroke dash array mean this is the start position of this drawing and using stroke dash offset property we can hide the star shape and next i'm going to use stroke dash offset property so i want to replace stroke dash array with stroke dash offset using this we can hide the star with offsetting dash and remove this line to show the star before the scroll draw and now we need to find percentage of the scroll for this we need to use window dot add event listener function let me show you so i'm going to type window dot add event listener then inside the parenthesis our event name is scroll and when i scroll the web page i want to call a function and our function name is my function and now we need to create a function which can calculate the scrolling value so i'm going to create this function at first i'm going to use function keyword function and our function name is my function inside the parenthesis i don't want to pass any parameter so i leave it blank then inside the curly braces at first i'm going to create a variable var and our variable name is scroll percent equal to inside the parenthesis first we need to join body scroll top value with document scroll top value let me show you so document dot body dot scroll top plus with that i'm going to add with that i'm going to add document element scroll top value document dot document element dot scroll top and we need to divide it with hide value so inside the parenthesis document dot get element dot scroll height and from scroll height we need to minus the client height so i'm going to type minus document dot document element dot client height this calculation going to return the scroll percentage and as you can see when i save my file it's already hide my shape and now we need to draw the shape when i scroll down so i'm going to create another variable where and our variable name is draw equal to length multiply by scroll percent and semicolon to end this line and if you want to reverse the drawing when you scroll upward for this star dot style dot stroke dash offset equal to length minus draw if i save this file and scroll my page as you can see it perfectly draw our shape and if i scroll it upward as you can see it reverse the drawing if i scroll downward it draw our image and if i scroll upward it's reverse the drawing i hope you like this project thanks for watching this video stay tuned for our next project